Hey lovelies, so I know just how tough it can be to get a homemade dinner on the table, especially on busy weeknights. So today I'm sharing three tasty recipes that all feature pre-made supermarket shortcuts. They're quick, they're easy, they're absolutely delicious, and I promise you, your entire family will love them. We're going to kick things off today with something I am calling my cheater's chicken pot pie. So it's yummy, it's super comforting, but it comes together in an absolute flash. Now for this recipe, I am starting with a nice oven-proof skillet on the stove. Oven-proof is really important here because once we're done making our chicken pot pie filling, we're going to be popping this in the oven to finish it off. I'm just going to get some butter into my skillet and let that melt down. Once your butter is melted, you can go ahead and get an onion into the pan. I promise you in this recipe, this is the only chopping that you're going to have to do. It is optional, but it's really delicious, so I wouldn't want you to skip this step. Good part is if you want to save time on a busy weeknight, you can always chop your onions during your Sunday meal prep and have them ready to get into the pan when you get home from work. We're going to cook that onion until it's nice and soft and translucent, and then we are going to get our veggies into the pan. So this is my first supermarket shortcut in this recipe. These are some frozen mixed vegetables. Usually if I'm making pot pie, I'll use fresh, but these are frozen. It makes this so much easier. Now you could go simple peas and carrots in this recipe, but I'm using a nice mixed veggie medley with a little bit of corn and some green beans added as well. There's no such thing as too many vegetables, am I right? Give those maybe another minute or so just to get them nice and heated through. And then I'm going to add just a couple tablespoons of flour to my skillet as well. The flour is going to help make a nice thick sauce for our chicken pot pie filling. I want to cook my flour for maybe a minute or so, making sure to stir it constantly because of course flour likes to burn really easily. And as soon as I've cooked off that more floury taste, I'm going to go ahead and add some chicken broth to the pan as well as a splash of milk. The milk is going to make this nice and creamy. For the chicken in this recipe, I am using yet another supermarket shortcut. I basically bought a rotisserie chicken and then just shredded it up into pieces. I'm going to get that into my skillet and I'm going to let all of this yumminess come to a simmer. It's going to start to thicken up and get really delicious. At this point, I'm also going to hit this with some salt and pepper. Seasoning is super essential when you're doing this kind of cooking. Once our filling is nice and bubbly, we'll go ahead and turn the heat off on our stove, and then it's time to top our pot pie. But instead of using a traditional pie crust, I am actually going to be using some store-bought biscuit dough. This is the kind that you buy refrigerated in a roll. I'm just going to place those biscuits all along the top of my chicken pot pie filling and then get this into the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for between 10 and 12 minutes. You'll know they're ready when they get nice and golden brown on top. Now, as though this could get any better, I thought the final step would be just topping this with a bit of melted butter and some dried parsley. This step is definitely optional, guys, but I will just tell you, it takes this dish from a 10 to an 11. Maybe an 11 and a half. And oh my gosh, guys, your entire family is going to love this dinner. Our entire team definitely did. Come on, guys, seriously, biscuity goodness. You're gonna want seconds and thirds, I promise you. Next up, for something just a little lighter, I have these amazing sweet and tangy pineapple meatballs. Now the meatballs we're going to be using in this recipe are actually frozen meatballs. They're a great supermarket shortcut. I always have some hanging out in the freezer. These are actually chicken meatballs, but you could do this with some turkey, some beef, or even some veggie meatballs if you wanted to keep this recipe totally vegetarian. I'm starting once again with my skillet heating up over medium high heat. I'm just going to get a little oil in there and as soon as that oil is hot, I'm going to add a little onion and some bell pepper to this. I'm using orange and red. You go ahead and use whatever color bell pepper you like. I'm just going to cook these veggies up, stirring them frequently. Once those veggies have had a chance to soften up a little bit, we are going to get our meatballs into the pan. The great part about frozen meatballs like this is that they're technically already fully cooked. So all you're doing when you're cooking them is actually just reheating them through. So you don't have to worry about your meatballs being undercooked and making you sick. They're fully cooked already. As soon as those meatballs start to heat up, we're gonna go in here with our pineapple. So this is actually another supermarket shortcut. This is canned pineapple. You can usually find it in the same part of of your supermarket as the fruit cups. You'll notice that I haven't actually drained any liquid from my canned pineapple. I'm going to be using that liquid mixed with a whole heaping of barbecue 
barbecue sauce to create an amazing sauce for these meatballs. Once all that tastiness has come together, we'll bring it to a boil, and as soon as it boils, we will reduce our heat to medium and let this simmer away for maybe 10 minutes or so, just until those meatballs have heated through completely and that sauce has reduced a little bit and really reached its maximum flavor potential. At this point, you can just hit it with a little salt and pepper and serve it up immediately. I like serving it up over some rice with some finely chopped green onion. I will say, not only does this make an amazing dinner tonight, but it will also make perfect leftovers for lunch tomorrow. What's not to like about that? Finally guys, I have a really fun pizza idea for you that is perfect for weeknight cooking. This is actually a chicken Caesar pizza. How delicious does that sound? It all starts with a store-bought pizza dough. Now you can use the frozen kind or the fresh kind that you find in the deli aisle at your supermarket. Either one will work. And we're just going to sort of press it into our pizza pan. If you don't have a nice round pizza pan like this, it is absolutely fine. You could do this flat in a baking sheet if you wanted to. Now this is often what is referred to as a type of white pizza because instead of red tomato sauce, we're going to be using a white sauce as our base. I am using some store-bought Caesar salad dressing. Trust me guys, this is going to be so good. We're gonna spread it on the same way we would a traditional tomato sauce in a pizza. We wanna leave a little lip around the edge for the crust. Once you've got a good layer of that on, you can pile on some cheese. So I'm using a combination of shredded mozzarella. Of course, it wouldn't be Caesar anything without a little bit of Parmesan. Now for the chicken in this pizza, I'm once again using my supermarket shortcut of a rotisserie chicken that I've just shredded up. I'm going to sprinkle that all over the top. And then I'm also going to be adding some chopped pre-cooked bacon to this. If you're not into pork, you always have the option to do this with some turkey bacon if you want to. But of course, bacon bits are synonymous with Caesar salad. I'll hit this with just a little more shredded mozzarella cheese and another hit of Parmesan, and it is ready to get into the oven. For best results, you always wanna use a super high temperature to cook your pizza. I've got my oven preheated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to get this yumminess in there, and after just about eight to 10 minutes, it is ready to be enjoyed. The final step, because it is a chicken Caesar pizza after all, is going to be shredding a little romaine lettuce on top. And there you have it guys, dinner on the table in 20 minutes or less. Even delivery takes longer than that. The most important question is, what are you going to do with the remainder of your evening? I hope you guys will give all three of these tasty recipes a try. If you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because I always love seeing your kitchen creations. Keep in mind, all of these yummy recipes are available in the description box below. You can find them there. And finally, if you haven't already, guys, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.